Welcome to the Old Souls and Seekers podcast brought to you by Satori Prime. If you're anything like us, you've been around and around the personal development and mindset block quite a few times. You've read the books, watched the videos, attended the seminars, and even worked with a coach or two, and yet you still find yourself searching for more. You may even feel stuck or that you should be farther along than where you are right now. And after doing over a decade of mindset work, we've come to this realization. Mindset work is like a small hit of dopamine that distracts you from your true work. You get these little hits of feeling better only to be met with the same underlying conditions and patterns over and over again. Now mindset was an important part of your evolution as well as ours, but it hits a plateau and now you find yourself ready for that deeper layer of growth and expansion. If you're listening to this podcast, then you're ready to get off that Ferris wheel. This podcast is only for those that are ready to dive deep and do the real inner healing work. For those that are ready to move past more information into actual experiences. If you're looking for more understanding, then you've come to the wrong place. This is a home for old souls ready to fully embrace and remember who they truly are. Ready to make a profound difference in their lives and in the lives of others. So welcome home, dear one. We're excited to be part of your journey. Um, all right, everybody, what's going on? Um, lots of smiles today because we have uh, a, a beautiful, amazing, smart, capable, wonderful, intelligent woman here. Uh, also a very good friend of mine, uh, Samantha Skelly. And uh, I, I don't know how it is that we've never actually featured you on our podcast before or anything else that we've done. The first time that she's on this show. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, like maybe two years ago, we, we did, we actually did a, a, an in-person interview on her show and it was fun because we just went through the gamut of all the craziness of our lives. But yeah, it's very, very um, fun to have Sam here. And man, I don't even know what to say about Sam, but like I have watched her meteoric growth uh, over the last few years, we'll get into all the, uh, bips and bobs over here about what she's up to, what she does in the world and, um, how she serves. Um, but it's been like just an absolute pleasure. I don't know, Sam, how, how long have we known each other now for six oh years, my seven gosh. years? I, I think probably six years now. Yeah. Six, six years now. Yeah. Something like that. Um, more recently she was, uh, with me and family and other friends down in Columbia. Woo! Drinking what the plant medicine, doing the fucking work down there. Jesus. Oh my gosh. That was doing wild. It. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've watched Sam grow. Uh, is this your third company now? Third. This is my third company now. Yeah. Third company now. So she, we could talk about a lot of things that Sam has done, but she, um, you know, over the last 10 years or so, she has served, uh, endless women in the, um, in the healthy eating space around binge eating and mindset and emotional healing space. Um, more recently in the last few years, she has launched an incredibly successful company called pause, which we often <laughs> often market for her to people as we whisper in their ears. Um, because anytime we hear the word pause it immediately is followed by the words breathwork.com. So if you go to pause, breathwork.com, yeah, like it's a constant. Someone's like, I right, just take a quick pause. And we're like, um, and, and so she, she, uh, you know, I remember we were having a conversation. She's like, I think I want to start a breathwork company just like that. And, and she did, and it's been a wildly successful. And now she serves, uh, personal and spiritual development through the breathwork space. She started her own app that's doing really well. And so the girl's just on fire. Like every time I talk to Sam, I'm like, you're doing what now? <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure I'll let you talk eventually. And I'm, and I'm sure that, so much work goes into everything that you do, but I'll say from the side, it's always like Sam has an idea. And before I know it, like the thing's got legs and it's off and running. And I'm like, oh, that seemed kind of effortless. Good for you. <laughs> so everybody, um, Samantha Skelly, welcome to the show. It's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. This is such a treat. Yeah. I did forget to mention one more thing. There's like an endless list of bullet points that we could talk about. Uh, Sam has also uh, recently graduated from um, a mystery school, a school of energetics with Elon and myself. So, yes. you know, besides just being friends, we've done so much intimate work together. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like our souls have danced in the yeah. ethers together. It's like, we know each other in just ways that most people never get to see each other. So 
yeah, it's just really wonderful to have you here. Um, yeah, what do you want to tell the people? Like, what is it that uh, people mm. need to know about you? Mm. One, one thing that, as soon as you asked me that question, the first thing that dropped in, I'm just going to go with this because uh, why not, is I love teaching people that they are their own drug. And through the breath and through 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 the body, we we can access these in, these these deep states. We can heal ourselves. You know, it's like one thing that I I, I am so committed to um, untangling is this sort of like dependency model in in the personal development and in the spiritual development communities. We yep. I, I love I love giving people not through thought and not through telling them, but giving them an experience that they are their own drug, giving them an experience and letting people actually, you know, at, at wizard school, we call it like glimpsing, right? Or, or like, at, like touching into who am I really? Like, what is that soul essence? How can I, how can I allow that soul essence to be my resting position for most of my life? Like, how can I just settle into that frequency? And in my experience, the the most effective and sustainable way to do that is through breathwork is through the breath i i discovered breathwork when i was overcoming um just a struggle with food and my body body image issues um emotional eating dieting doing like all sorts of different dieting and and i i i was just disconnected completely disconnected from um, my body. I didn't trust my body. I didn't believe in its wisdom. I, I was just disconnected head and heart, mind and body. I would overthink everything, overanalyze everything. And breath work. What I, I remember reading that book, um, eat, pray, love. Did you get, you guys probably didn't read that. Cause it's like, kind of like, a, I watched, I watched the movie though. I watched I watched the movie. The movie. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a movie until like six <laughs> yeah. weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know that part where she like I don't know if it's in the movie, but you know that part where she goes to Bali and she finds yeah. that medicine man? Was yes. he in the movie? Yeah. He I was. Think, I, it might have even been a medicine woman though, but yes, she she meets someone, yeah. Okay, okay. So Anyway, I went to go see that guy in Bali because I was like, why? I'm like, why am I so disconnected from my body? Why do I have anxiety? Why do I why do I struggle with food? Why do I struggle with this? And and he said to me at the time, my brain's so busy, I need to meditate. And at the time, I, I hated meditation. I would sit there for, you know, a couple of minutes. And I'm like, I hate this so much. Like it was so uncomfortable to be in my body. And my emotional experience just sort of toggled from like an anxious to like numbness, anxious to numbness. And I didn't really get to experience the whole spectrum of emotionality. So anyway, I'm like, oh gosh, this guy's telling me to meditate. Like I hate this. And so I go to this class and I actually missed the meditation class. And the next class was a breathwork class. And I walk in, I, I, I walk in and, and the first thing I thought of was like breathwork, like isn't that just breathing? Like, shouldn't, like, doesn't everyone just know how to do that? Like, <laughs> I'm like, what is this? And I, I walk up these stairs and there's about 30 people in this room. Everyone's lying down with pillows and blankets. I'm like, okay, this is, this is looking strange. <laughs> like what's wow. happening here. Um, and then there's this guy who's dressed all in white with long hair and a beard. He looks like Jesus. And I'm like, what's going on here? This is weird. <laughs> and he comes up to me and he was like, are you ready to go on the ride of your life? And I'm like, uh, okay. And he said, he said to me, you are going to experience sensations in your body that you've never experienced. You're going to experience the highest states of joy and bliss and ecstasy. And then you're going to release and shed and let go everything that you're holding onto in your body. That's not serving you. And remember, this is when I was like, my emotionality was so limited. I could only really like feel a few things. It was, I, I felt disconnected. So he taught us this breath pattern and within three or four minutes, my body was feeling alive and electric and, um, you know, like, I'm like, Whoa, like what is going on? Like I actually felt self love for the first time. Like I, I did a lot of self care, but not a lot of self love, you know, like I, I, I got handbags and manicures, but I actually felt the energy of my heart and I felt that peace and I felt that contentment. And I remember sort of waking up from that experience and being like, why does the whole world not know we can do this? Like, this is so insane. And so guys, you, you're so right. Like it was like one day I was like, I'm going to start a breathwork company. And then like, it seemed like, a, it seemed like a month later, it was like a, you know, already a seven figure company. But I truly believe like 
I believe the, the, it was building and building and building for 11 years, you know, it was building and it was growing and it was like, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? So as soon as I decided, it was just like rocket fuel, you know, um, cause I really do believe that breathwork is something that gets to be mainstream and, and if people actually knew how powerful they were and if people knew that they were their own drug, we wouldn't be dealing with so much of the crap that's going on in the world today. I truly believe that. Yeah. That's awesome. I, uh, when I first got to San Diego, I went to Bhakti Fest, which was like, a, which was a huge stress for me at the time. Like, I'm like, what am I, I doing in this crazy ass place? I was 30 years old. Two, two experiences. I remember there one, um, I met this Yogi who at the time must've been in his late seventies and could still balance his entire body on one finger upside down or like two fingers like this, something like that. Like, That's so we crazy. watched, so we watched him do it. And the whole class was how to stand on your head, like how to be upside down, like do practice. And because I'm like stocky, I could actually do that quite easily. So for my, I think it was exactly when I turned 30, I was upside down <laughs> <laughs> with this yogi, which was such a good metaphor for turning 30. It's like, we're going to flip it all upside down now. That's and awesome. then, and then the second one is there's a guy, Michael Brian Baker, maybe you know him. Mm-mm. He's out in LA. He's, he's, he's also a, a breathwork facilitator. I think he actually has a breathwork Institute up in LA and he took us through some holo, holotropic, holographic yeah, 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 yeah. for like an hour and a half. And it is, you know, it, it literally touches some DMT experiences. Mm-hmm. And so I w- had some pretty big out there experiences with it. And then it was like, okay, now it's time to end. And I remember like my legs didn't work. Like I literally could not peel myself off the ground for about 45 minutes because there's so much energy running through my body. And and I too had not had experiences like that at that point outside of psychedelics. And so I was like mildly concerned because I had no function beneath the belt line of my body. And when I finally like could could muster like this drunk walk up to him, you know, like I had this weird look in my eyes, like <laughs> You know, like something really wrong. He takes one look at me, he goes, three days. I'm like, huh? He goes, three days, you'll be fine. Because I, I was like in such a different world. Like I remember walking mm-hmm. outside and you have that like HD vision and your whole system is open. It, it, it really fucking opened me up. Suffice it to say, I've never done that again. <laughs> well, so that's, a, you know, you know, that's the problem that I see is, is breath work is such a powerful modality. Like it truly is like the most powerful self-healing modality. Like obviously with plant medicine and ayahuasca and mushrooms and things like that, like you can have some pretty intense experiences, sure. but using nothing but your breath, like breath work is so intense. And so my first experience was three hours. Yours was 90 minutes. Like that's too intense for the system because we're not used to holding that amount of energy in our bodies. And so titration is super important when we are starting our breathwork journey, because we want to slowly open up our window of tolerance. So our body gets used to, uh, to stabilizing that amount of energy in, in the body. If we just blast people open, it's actually going to do more harm than good, right? Like, like what you said, like, I've never done that again. Okay. Well, if the path was different and you did two minutes of breath work every day for three months and your body really got to feel that and feel the effects of that, then we could slowly open it up more and more and more. Um, so I see, I see a lot of facilitators just like, let's get people high off their own supply and blast them to the ether so they can see aliens. Right. And I feel like that really comes from an egotistical place as a facilitator. So our method at pause is to like slow and steady wins the race. Like let's go slower because a more intense experience with breath work doesn't, it doesn't relate to the transformation, right? Like it can be, we can have softer, deeper experiences that are actually more impactful than like a psychedelic style journey. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm yeah. super curious, like since having done, you know, our wizard school and things like that, how mm-hmm. has breath work shifted either for you uh doing it on your own or you know taking people through the process because obviously you know learning to hold energy shift energy become aware of energy how did it all kind of start to shift it literally just put everything together like so i had the maps of breath work of like oh my gosh my body can go into like these crazy states and what's happening and everything felt like very elusive and amalgamated and then once i learned um our wizard are we not saying the name of it for privacy reasons I don't know. Yeah, okay, I don't know. I'll just keep with that. Let's just go wizard school. Yeah, I actually say good. I actually say wizard school as well because I like having my my containers that are just for me and not like the whole world. Anyway, um, you know what I mean. I, get, I totally get that. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so 
what once I learned wizard school mapping, then I could actually be like, oh, this frequency and this energy is this and I could do this with so it just brought everything together in this beautiful way it's like I could feel the effects that I could tap into the energies using breathwork but the the wizard school framework like let me put it all in a place so it made more sense to my logical mind right my body didn't my body like knew like oh wow we're healing this is amazing we're growing I feel great but then with that mapping I'm like oh I feel great because of this yeah Yeah. so it's so cool it's so cool and I just keeps deepening and deepening and deepening which is really amazing as well and um yeah it's just it's just wild what we have the potential to do who do you like so when people because there might be people on here that are not familiar with breath work at all they're like Mm -hmm. what's like breathe uh so it's a two-part question one kind of like who is this for uh and then two just a little bit of like what it looks like and the modality you know is this something go to classes is something they can do in their house, like things like that, that people might not be aware of. Yeah. So, so it's for literally everyone. Uh, and I'm going to break that down even more who we serve at pause. Like our general community is people who, uh, struggle with anxiety, right? People who have like that chronic low grade anxiety, 24 seven, they're always driving their sympathetic nervous system. It's like, that's that place. Like if we can help people downregulate from parasympathetic, which is the fight or flight, which so many people are in, especially in this age into the parasympathetic, did I say that right? The sympathetic fight or flight. If we can help them downregulate into the parasympathetic, which, which is the rest and digest that like, if we can teach people that downregulation and they can do that down regulation multiple times of their of the day, we begin to stabilize ourselves in that parasympathetic. So, so many people identify with anxiety and so many people like, I'm anxious, I'm anxious. Oh, this is making me anxious. So if we can help people realize that they're not anxious, but they're experiencing the sensation of anxiety and through the breath, we can actually clear it and cleanse it. It gives people this deep sense of empowerment. You know, I don't, I don't believe we can empower people, but I feel like we can inspire people to empower themselves, right? Going back to what I started out with, of like, we are our own drug. If we can teach people how to do this, it's amazing. You know, it's like, I remember teaching at a conference probably like a year and a half ago. It was actually, I, I, um, I spoke right before Kobe Bryant. Um, yeah, it was really like amazing. And it was a real estate conference and there was 2000 men there. There was probably like one chick and it was, it was very, you know, um, masculine and man, you know, you've gone to those conferences. So here I am, this like, Hey, this like women who's going to teach the breath work. Um, so at first everyone was like, what is this girl doing? Is she going to make teach me how to make more money? Cause if not, like I'm not interested. Right. So I got up there and I, I walked 2000 people through this experience and, I shit you not, the entire room was in tears. Like it was, I've never seen any, it shocked me. I'm like, this is crazy. Like how, what is happening? And after, um, after I left, I was in the lobby and like story after story after story after story of these grown ass men were coming up to me being like, I haven't cried in 40 years or I just forgived my dad or I, it's like, wow. what's possible? What's possible when we get out of our mind and into our bodies yeah. is so amazing. And we don't have to overthink about it. We just have to use the breath and let the breath and the body do the work because we are our own healers. Like we are the the medication to our nervous systems that we need. That's beautiful. What I, what I like about breath work and I think why it's so effective, because really what we're saying, I think like we, because our messaging is very similar to yours, right? It's like, Hey, like, let's, let's retrain the body, how to have a parasympathetic response, rest and digest. And then like, there's an innate intelligence that just takes over. The body knows how to clear whatever is there to clear at that exact moment, right? Like just like going on a detox, you're not like, okay, it's, you know, the the whole body detoxes and whatever order it chooses. It's not like we can be like, okay, I need to spot detox, like, you know, this one thing. Um, and so It makes sense because breath work, it's like versus training awareness, because there's a lot of portals, right, for yeah. healing, obviously, but versus like training someone how to sit in awareness, you're, you're basically saying, hey, focus on your breath. You have this one thing to be aware of. Even even the basic Buddhism, you know, the, the, when you go sit in Vipassana, 
is focusing on breath three and a half days of literally just watching your breath before you do any sort of practice. And it's like, and, and something in that focus creates a specific type of awareness that just everything that we try to run too fast from, because we're so busy with our lives that our body never has an opportunity to release just naturally comes. And it's just, a, yeah. and, and that's such a beautiful thing because again, like the mind wants to make the healing so complicated and it's like no focused awareness is literally how the body uses its own intelligence to heal. And so it would make sense that like in any setting, in any organization, like you can bring people to an experience um, mm-hmm. that they're suddenly going to come to certain realizations. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful doorway. Um, it's hard work can be, doesn't always have to be, um, mm-hmm. but it's very rewarding because you know, I, I said, yeah, I, like I never did that again. I've never done holotropic breathing for a long mm-hmm. period of time, but I took that guy's CDs and actually practiced, um, you know, between 10 to 30 minutes a day for quite some time. And the, the effects are profound. It's funny, like most of what we look for as a solution always occurs to people to look outside of themselves. And then the, the truth is, is that it's always, everything is inside of yourself. Like everything you've ever looked for, every question that you have, every healing that you've ever wanted, every success story that you've ever wanted to write. Like it's, it's really all about enabling this part of you. And it's like, everything happens inside of awareness. The real question is, how are you training it? And, and, and I think more importantly, I want everyone to realize, and Sam, hopefully you agree is that like people come to intensive, like weekend intensives mm. and they often treat them like the way that they order stuff on Amazon. <laughs> it's like, ah. they want it, they want it the next day. They want that immediate satisfaction. Mm. And while you may get a pop, right? Like you may have a major insight, a breakthrough, something that really like in that moment, you may not even realize how big it is until you look at your life 10 years down the line. You're like, wow, that one oh little change I made totally. changed everything. However, and again, you know, see if, if you concur with this, it's like, it, it really is taking what you learn and applying it into daily practice. Mm. If you want like sustainable, cultivated, well-being foundation, grounding the system and like living yeah. from a really like much more peaceful, harmonic place in your life than, than most people probably imagine. Like, I don't think anything happens because you have a single experience. You know, it's just doesn't, it doesn't yeah, really stick. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Like, it was not like Amazon Prime. We're like, this is crap. Yeah. <laughs> I got to wait for this shit. <laughs> I have to wait 48 hours. What is going on? Yeah, totally. That's funny. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, what are you, uh, what are you most excited about right now? What is it that you're up to, whether it's pro- professionally, person, personally, whatever? Oh, gosh, that's a great question. You know, I think my answer to this is, um, so I've been doing this business thing for 12 years now, and I finally have a leadership team that is a team of A players in each department. And so it's such a, it's such a trip because I show up to work. I'm like, what am I supposed to do today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, like, all right. I, I used to literally do, uh, you know, I used to do the, the marketing, the sales, the delivery, the operations, the client, this, that like I, I, I every function, I owned every KPI. And now I show up and I'm like, okay, I've got a marketing leader and a sales leader and an operations leader. And I, you know, I, someone completely running the, the delivery. So I'm so excited because I finally get to play the function in my business that I've always wanted to play, which is just creating epic content and producing amazing um, films and documentaries to share. Actually, um, Guy talked about us being down in Colombia and um, oh, this is like gives me goosebumps even thinking about it, but we were down in Colombia and it was just like the wildest ride on, on, on ayahuasca. Elon, we missed you a lot. Um, but <laughs> This like one of the experiences, like I saw, I, I saw like the next cut of my company pause, right? And I had like all of these epic leaders who were who were treating pause as their own. You know, our leadership team really is like a team of entrepreneurs. You know, they each own the department and are, uh, you know, responsible for the KPIs and the success of that department. It's like a, it's like many businesses within the business, if you will. So, right. so I, I saw that vision of like. Of, of, of that happening. And then the next, the next, I was like, okay, well, like what's my next chapter? What's my next cut? And I saw 
it, like she showed me this this scene of me being in a theater and I was viewing I was like looking up at the screen and it was like this epic um this epic visual was this like a digital art this like movie um of of kind of like articulating the human experience and evoking emotion and before you watch the movie you're like breathing to get into your body so you can really absorb the transmission from from this documentary so that was like the first thing and then the next cut was like me actually in the movie but it was on the film set of it and I was behind the camera directing and I was like this is what I want. This is what I've always wanted to do. Like I want to create films that evoke emotion and tell stories. And that is basically like the, um, the, the front end of our business. And that, that's what brings people in is through, through the storytelling and through, through the, the arts and, and, and the documentaries. And then the next cut of it, it was like the energy just like went up and in the sky, it said pause productions. And I was like, that's it. That's what it is. Like, that's my next thing. And so like, I, I went back on, um, like I went back to the room and like, there was like dodgy ass internet, but I like tried my best to get on godaddy.com. And I was like, pauseproductions.com purchase, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now that I have this leadership team set in place and, and the company is running and it's functioning and like people are crushing it. I'm so excited to, to build pause productions, which is going to be our, um, like our media company and like creating stories and like telling stories of transformation of like how this type of work, the work that we're all doing here is, is changing lives and, and, you know, bringing people back home into their bodies and back into their, into connection. So, um, that's a long way of saying I'm super pumped for pause productions. Yeah, That's, <laughs> right. that's amazing. So can, and something I want to just say about Sam is like, uh, it'll probably come through in the audio. Hopefully you guys can just hear like the, the enthusiasm Sam, Sam lives with. Like I have met a handful of people in my life that have just like, she can't help it. There's just so much energy coming out of her. And honestly, like she's tamed some of it because it used to be just like body parts flailing in every direction whenever we got together. <laughs> and, and, and I'm telling you, like, I love, I love that about Sam, but here's why I want to say that is I have always found someone who has so much animation they use a lot of inflection in their voice. They're super animated. There's energy. Like their ability to manifest in reality is bar none more than anybody I've ever met in my life. Like it just seems like anything is at their whim. And like, I kind of want to explain them in the spiritual way because, you know, like reality is just a match of frequency, right? It's just a match of vibration from inside within ourselves. And so to me, it's like, I've always had this like really monotone voice, even though I also like to tell big stories. Elon likes to move his fucking body around and tell big stories. We're like, we're like, you're telling guys on the scoop, telling stories, you know? Um, but we don't, you have a lot of inflection in our voice because we have these kind of like monotone, bassy voices. And there's just something about this motion. You can't see mm -hmm. what I'm doing with my hands, but like these like wave motions that I've always found. And um, you know, you, you exemplify that to me of like just energy and passion and like, to me, it's like passion is what makes progress. You know, that that's really it. Like people are always like, how come I'm not doing well? I'm like, you don't give a fuck about what you're doing. <laughs> that's why, like, you, don't, you don't care about it. Like you're doing it as a means for something, but th there's no alignment in your person to it. And so like when Sam is like, I'm going to do this breath work thing, it's not like an idea. To, it's not just an idea. It's like her core essence feels it. Mm -hmm. Like even my wife sometimes will sit around and, and my wife and Sam are, are very, very good friends, maybe best of friends. Yeah. Um, and she's, and I remember when I, when I was still on this hamster wheel, like trying to make stuff happen, she goes, you know, Sam just sits around and like, <laughs> Gets, drinks some cacao and goes like really internal before she makes any choices. It's not just like haphazard to her. And I'm like, fine, Mandy. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll start doing that too, you know, because uh -huh. the, the, re the reality is like it works. Like I've just seen it work for her time and time again. And so for like anybody listening, like if you can, like really put some awareness on like Sam's energy. There's so much vibrancy and, and uh, a lot of V words that I can use here, um, vivaciousness and stuff like that. And, and to me, it's like, if you want to master or begin mastering your manifestation, your reality, like it, it kind of goes hand in hand. You just, uh, mm -hmm. you have to, you, you get to get to that place where you're like, wow, you live your life with so much passion and everything that comes through to you, um, come, comes with that. Like you, you awe me regularly where you're like, I'm going to go do this. And like next time I talk to you, I'm like, it's done already. I'm like, that was no small thing to get done. It's just so amazing. Yeah, it really yeah. is. 
And at the same time, like, uh, again, I'm going to compliment the fuck out of you. I hope you can receive it all. S- Sam, like there, I know very few people that just are good at laughing about themselves. Mm-hmm. And Sam is like a, an expert, <laughs> uh, like just being goofy and just laughing at herself. And again, it's such an endearing quality and something I really, really look up to. Mm, thanks dude I, I i receive and appreciate all of that and i i love how you said i'm toned down because it's so true when guy and i first met like i was a loose kid it was all of this passion and energy but like not, not contained and it was just all it was spewing and i remember so mandy his wife is my best friend and so i remember when you guys started dating guy you're like wait you are best friends with her like yeah, made no I, sense. <laughs> so funny. So no, funny. they couldn't. They couldn't be more opposite. But right, it's like balancing force. Right, my wife is like this really grounded, like slow person. But you should see her when she comes around. Sam, she like something inside of her wakes up. There's like goofiness and this like laughter, and and I love it. That's amazing. You know, it's Sam's so one of our good. favorite people. Oh, Sam, so I, you know, the journey is amazing and I love Pause Productions and I love the idea and all that stuff. You know, people hear this like twelve year journey, mm-hmm. and. I think a lot of the times they get stuck because, right, like we're talking to you now where you're on the other side of it. You have this dream team. You're doing this. You're doing that. Um, But maybe like share with people because I know in running a business, right, like there's so many times throughout this process where you probably thought you've like lost everything or you're like going to be homeless and broke and all that other good stuff. Um, And so on the one hand, you know, like sharing a little bit about Mm. that journey and two specifically with, you know, wizard school and breath work Mm. and how these practices that you implemented way before there were any levels of like out there, real world success, what people Mm -hmm. would look at God and like how you dedicated to these constant habits, even though someone told you to meditate and you're like, I fucking hate meditation or someone, <laughs> you know, all these things that I think people think that once you get to this level, like, Oh, well they got all this time. So now they do all these practices, but like, mm. both know that we've put in so much fucking work to even get to this place. So yeah. maybe share a little bit about that. Cause I think most yeah. people are probably more stuck in yeah. the ickiness of the process. Totally. So I will say to even today, having a multi-million dollar company, we're super healthy, we're super profitable. There's parts of me that still think I'm going to be broken homeless, yeah. you know? And I think that's really important to note because like, it would take a lot for me to be broken homeless at this point, right? It would take a lot for me to be broken homeless. But my system and my parts yeah. and the, the parts that are stuck in other timelines that are not yet fully untangled and dissolved still convince the fuck out of me that I'm going to sabotage everything. Everything's going to burn down. It's going to be awful. Everyone's going to hate you. You're a shitty leader. Like, it's still there, right? Mm-hmm. Now, here's here's the difference. Earlier on in my career... Number one, it was uh, more probable, right? Of like, <laughs> of like, no, you actually might be broken homeless because you're investing all this money and you don't have cash flow and you're making dumb decisions. Um, I now know that those were good, good decisions because they were necessary risks to get to where we are today. But there was the 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 high probability that I would lose all of my money and sabotage the company for sure. And then also I didn't have the discernment to understand what are my human parts that are telling me stories that aren't true. And what is the, what is the truth, right? At wizard school, they talk about like, like what feels real versus what is actually true. Like it felt real to me that I was going to lose everything. It felt real to me that I wasn't good enough. It It felt real. It's not true. Now that, that body experience is still very, uh, it still happens today. You know, it's like, even when I log on to my chase account, I know we're okay. Everything's fine. I, I know that, but my body doesn't think so. My body's like, you're going to leave. Like if you, if your account sinks $30,000, you're done. Like you are done. Like everything's over. It still does that. So you guys like no shit, like literally every single time I log on to my chase account, I, I take a moment, I breathe, I put my hands on my body. I'm like, you are so safe. 
You are mm. so held. You are so protected. The number that you see is, is it's totally fine. Like we're good. Like just rest into that. And I have to do that practice every single time because there are these parts of me that still want to sabotage everything, blow everything up, convince me that I'm uh, going down the wrong direction or whatever it is. So I want to just say that no matter what level you get to, it's always going to be there. Um, it might lessen the more work that we do. Like I, I would say my, my, the scarcity in my system, um, today versus 10 years ago is, is less, but it's not gone. But what strengthened is my discernment. What strengthened is my identification with my soul versus my humanness, right? Not in a spiritually bypassy way. Like I'm with my parts and I, I know there's a body experience going on that's telling me one story and I'm going to be with that. And I'm going to know that that's not the truth. Like, yes, that feels real, but it's not the truth. The truth is I'm an infinite being. The truth is, is I can attract wealth. The truth is, is this mission is, is so successful. The truth is, is we have thousands of raving fans all around the world. Like that is the truth. And so it's really about holding both pieces in two hands, but not identifying with either. You know, it's like, I don't want to get attached to the fact that we're crushing it and everything is amazing because it's going to make me stop like keeping my eyes on the prize, right? It's like, how can I be, how can I have like almost like a sense of not being attached and neutrality and just being an observation of it all. Like I observe the part of me that's still scared shitless every single day. Yeah. I observe the part of me that is so open and available to, to receive millions of dollars. I am open to the part of me that still gets so fucking annoyed when team members mess up. I am, I am accepting of the part of me. You know, do you know what I mean? It's like, there's so many pieces to this journey and it's, it, it's about having healthy relationships with all of it. Cause the second we're like, Oh, I'm here now. Okay. Yay. Guess what's going to happen the next day or maybe the next minute you're going to be back to in, in that part triggered AF wondering like if you're on the right track. And so it's so important to have this position of neutrality as we're navigating through entrepreneurship. And I genuinely believe that it's not businesses that fail. It's people. It's so hard to do this. Like it's, a, you have to be insane to be an entrepreneur. You guys know this, like the amount of like mental torture that you, that you, that is required is like, you gotta be insane to do this. And I think the three of us are pretty freaking insane for us to stick with this day after day after day, week, month. But what's driving us is this greater vision of what's possible. You yep. know, the three of us share this, this, um, this desire of like, what the fuck is going on in the world right now? Like, like we know there's a next cut for humanity and we're here to create that. Like we were born to do that. Like that's why we're here. And so it's like, we're going to deal with a healthy amount of shit in order for us to actualize that mission. Cause I believe that it's possible in this lifetime. That's super well said. Yeah. Front to back. I've, uh, I've recently been, um, yeah. And I couldn't agree more on every front. Like, you know, our company went over 10 years this past June, fucking insane you know uh, both the uh, affirmation that comes at you and sometimes the hate that comes at you from people because mm -hmm. of like and, and and that always hits the system really hard because it's like a misconception of of how you see yourself mm -hmm. and like your desire for goodness in the world and so when someone comes at you and is like hey like what the fuck and then you're like yeah. what is happening right now yeah, right yeah. and then it's like, and the, those fear those fear parts and same thing with the logging into bank account mm -hmm. like all that. Yes. Yes. So, so well shared. And I, I do think that's a really important thing for people to hear. It's like mm -hmm. success does not heal your body. Yes. Like, what, like what, and I'm putting this in air quotes, mm -hmm. like what people consider successful mm -hmm. does, does, does nothing for your inner world. Whatever's happening in your outer world. It, it, it it's like, um, it's like that mistake that the mind makes that causality means effect, you know, like, cause we were so stuck in that. So it's like, Oh, because this thing is happening here, I'm having this experience. It's like, it's not, it's probably more the opposite it's because there's something internally happened that you're having this experience in the first place. Mm -hmm. But, um, I've been, I've been in deep study of quantum physics. And I mentioned this because you kind of, you, you, you talked about holding two parts and like, a, 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 like a revelation I think for humanity would be, and I actually think for many people, quantum physics, if like they studied it mm -hmm. because it's mentally palpable like mm -hmm. there's a philosophy there mm -hmm. even though the philosophy fucks with your head so mm -hmm. much because it's 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 basically like looking at the whole of paradox so nothing really makes sense but what it it seems to lead to because i've been i've i a few years back i sat in a room with some very very wise people for 10 days and all we talked about was paradox i took this very expensive course 
and these these people who have been studying these things for 40 years just spent 10 days talking about all these paradoxes in reality and and what i remember feeling is like oh all these paradoxes are detaching me from from everything i'm no longer attached to this i'm no longer attached to that and so it was like another doorway mm. into, into spirituality in a weird way mm. and i keep saying like isn't it kind of weird that humanity hasn't evolved to be able to, to hold two contradictory ideas within themselves yeah. as a society and as individuals because right now it's like you know we're seeing this display of like everything being pulled into these extremities and i'm like you know what i can hold both like some days i'm like this and some days i'm like that and it's both and i can just totally. observe all these angles of me inside and yeah. that, that feels the healthiest but like what's what <laughs> i wanted to share this with you because something i've learned from studying uh studying quantum physics is that there's like a of course, we know that everything there is and everything there ever will be is already here. Mm. But we've also now learned that the classical view of a reality, like how we've seen it, is like there's a universe and it's like us observing the universe is not actually true. There's actually no universe until someone observes it. Right. And mm. so the, the universe, in a way, has an energy. And what this is, I love this. It has like stuff that wants to be found out like whether it's breath work or whether it's like serving somebody, there's like this energy. And so when the energy wants to be seen, it helps manifest the physical body in order to see it. Like it needs an observer to see it. And in the same moment that it's seen is the moment that it comes into fruition, which is a really kind of crazy way of saying like the whole chicken and the egg thing. It's like what came first. It's like actually like, like the chicken wanted to be there. So the egg got created, but like in the moment the egg got created, the chicken came into being too. It's, kind of like this again like very paradoxical so what what i love about that is like whoever is serving and whatever it is you're doing in your life it's like you are you are almost like brought physically into fruition to observe some part of reality for all of reality like for all of us to learn from from all of us to see it mm. and so when i like hear you speak it's like yeah like this is when we talk about purpose and passion and alignment and like what are you here for and your why it's like that's it. Like it is literally calling you forth. The, the real thing is whether you're going to do something about it, whether you're going to create structures and teach people whatever it is that happened on your life path. And we have 8 billion different people who can teach mm. 8 billion different perspectives to all of us. And instead of uh, arguing about who's got the best fucking perspective on planet earth or the, the one that's good and true, which is absurd. It's more of like a, this, you know, I think the evolution is like the melding of all these ideas together and us all being like humble yes. and thankful that yes. every one of us has been given that opportunity to see reality mm -hmm. differently. And it helps us grow and shape our own reality in new ways. Mm -hmm. And and like, that's where I hope it goes. Like, that's where I hope we come to this understanding where we're like, everybody's a gift. Everybody's yes. a gift. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's exactly it. And, you know, ayahuasca was, was the teacher for me in duality. And holding not only two, but holding infinite possibilities, you know, there's left and right. And then there's everything in between. Yeah. And how, how can we just like, how can we, yeah, it, it was like the medicine. As soon as I was like, oh yeah, this is it. This is definite. She's like, no, 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 it's not. Yeah. <laughs> there's her. And I'm like, oh wow. And, and you know, it's like, now I see that it's like the second my brain thinks in, in, in like definite, the other pieces of me are like, no, 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 there's so many other possibilities. And you know, guy, I've heard you speak about this before in our like friend, friend circles and things like that of, of this exact thing. And it's just so refreshing and it's just so beautiful. It's like, how can we convey that? Like, Hey, you're safe. Even if there's so many people that disagree with you, you know, yeah. and they, like, like this is an infinite universe. There is so much space for all different sides and all different um, opinions. And the best thing that we could do together is just open up the spaciousness for diversity and opinions with so much grace and so much harmony, because why the fuck not? Like, yeah. what, are, what are we doing trying to be like, everyone needs to do this? You know, it's like, what? So. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, it'll be a really beautiful place to come to when it's like somebody can, you know, I I'm all for like a, someone shares a difference of opinion and like, you might even feel aggressively angry towards that human being. What we get to realize is though, like that's just a part of you from your past, some trauma that got yeah. touched in that moment. It's not this individual that's creating that that feeling for you in your body. And, and so if, 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 if one of my friends says something that angers me, it's almost like, thank you, friend. Mm. You've, you've highlighted, you've spotlighted something in my system that 
was covered up that has been working subtly in the background to sabotage my alignment. Yes. And in this moment, you are gracefully being the mirror to highlight this part inside of me. You're not doing anything. I'm going to project my shit on you because that's what our machinery does. That's what our optics does, right? It needs to create binary. Oh, it can't be me. It's got to be out there. But like that, that's the truth. And that's where we, we get to evolve to. And, you know, I love that. It's like, I'm so proud, hell or high water, whatever happens with our companies and our finances. Like the truth is like underneath all of that is this deep desire to serve humanity into Mm -hmm. evolving into this next, hopefully much higher level of consciousness than we've ever been at. And it, and it does, it takes the ground troops. It takes the going into the weeds with people. It gets messy. It has people fucking uh, project horrible things from their lives onto you. And, and like something we started telling you and our clients were like, it's okay if you hate us. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. For the first time you get to exude that and still know that like, there's love here for you. You can ha- be held in that because a lot of us have not been able to express how angry and sad we are inside and mm-hmm. still have that be held with love because our parents truly didn't know how to do that. No one did that for them. So they have no fucking templates for it. And it's like, until you are like, "Ah!" I'm like, freak the fuck out with somebody and just let that. And the person's like, still love, still connected with you. That that's the work. And it's like, imagine if like that was the foundation of yeah. all relationships on planet earth. Like, Oh my gosh. What's, oh my what's gosh. impossible. Every comment box becomes an opportunity yeah. and instead of like just trying to disseminate or like dismantle everybody who doesn't think, feel and act like you. Yeah. The world just needs to scream. You know, sometimes I, like I, I, I switch breath work for just screaming my head off. Cause it's like, sometimes that energy is just like, ah! like I just need yeah. to get it out. Like it's just so pent up, you know? And, and it's like, how can we just permission each other to, to like, hold each other in that because that that is the human experience like that is what we're all going through simultaneously yeah we just haven't been able to experience and be held while being extremely sad or extremely Mm -hmm. angry frustrated or extremely whatever it might be um and every time it's so funny like whether at home with my wife with my kids with our clients you can you can sense so much of the pattern wanting to go prove itself correct and like push you away and do all the things that it usually does. And when you just keep standing there, it like the system kind of short circuits and it's like, I don't know what to do right now. Yeah. Like, that, you know, yes. um, it, that's what it is. And I think as you guys pointed to beautifully, it's like, that's what humanity is going through right now. It's going through that on a, every human scale. This is not like happening in this pocket because they experienced the shooting at a school or in this Mm -hmm. pocket because they're, uh, you know, whatever their dollar is went to shit and like everyone's poor all of a sudden, like, it's just a global thing that we're all dealing with and, um, finding safety. We talk about this all the time is, is it's the ultimate. And so just to kind of like bring this back to, to pause is, you know, there's a, what Sam is pointing to is this healing modality that one can do. And we've, because we've been at wizard school and all this stuff, I think we all agree, like simple is the best. Yeah. It's not what your mind wants. Cause it wants this to be this elaborate, like complicated thing, but it's not like our body is intuitive. I'm, I'm listening to this book right now about, um, kids and genetic. And they're like, you know, when you're, uh, when a baby is being made inside of a woman's body, the mom and the dad don't have to sit there and go, okay, uh, time to grow an arm. Yeah. All right. You know, now the finger, like you don't do that. It's all happening on its own. Like you, you're not even aware enough to be a part of that. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's like, why do you think that changes when the kid gets older? Yeah. The same, the same thing that, groom in your body is still growing them outside of your body. And I was yes. like, shit, Dude. Like, I never even thought of that. Right. Cause we're like, now it's all me. So this whole nature nurture thing is happening. But, um, uh, point is that there's simple things that your body knows how to do mm-hmm. if you just allow it. And mm-hmm. what Sam talked to, and you know, obviously what we teach here as well is like, 
getting out of your own goddamn way to mm-hmm. allow for this natural healing without you having to participate or understand every mm-hmm. single thing. So Sam, I think you have uh, an event coming up, correct? Mm-hmm. Like we can invite people to. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, we have a few, we have a few things going on. <laughs> Hit them with it. Um, so for those people, you know, when we have these conversations with other people who have this soul curriculum to do good, um, people just want to follow that, you know, and, and oftentimes like following the soul led path is confusing. And oftentimes following the soul led path makes no sense to the mind. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pausing here because I remember that time period in my, in my, in my own life, right. Of like, I was on this trajectory of like, I'm going to become a real estate agent because that makes sense. And that's what my mom did. Anyway, you got your guys' mom's a real estate agent too. I just realized that. <laughs> More recently. More recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, that was my path, right? That's what my mom did. And that, and then my soul was like, no, no, no. Like we were going this way. And so for those of you who feel called to, to serve, um, and, and bring breath work into the world, my invitation would to be, to explore that, like let them like surrender the logic of the mind and follow that intuitive. Yes. Of the body that, that soul pull into your next cut. Um, and if you want more information on that, you can head to pause breathwork.com slash Satori prime. I believe this. Yeah. I believe that's what it is. Um, and, and just feel into it. You know, it's like with, with, with following your soul and doing the thing that feels so in alignment. Um, again, it's like, if the body says yes, you'll figure out the rest. Like it didn't make sense for me to do, to, to, to start these two wellness brands. It didn't make sense for me to do that. Right. Cause my mind was trying to justify it. Um, but my soul was like, no, 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 this is your, this is your path. This is what you're here to do. And if you know, you know, if you have that feeling, if you have that, like, yes, feeling in your body. Um, and you feel called to become a breathwork facilitator, head on over to pausebreathwork.com slash Satori Breath. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that's the link. If it's not, whenever the podcast comes out, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll link it on down there, but something, something just go to, go to the website, do the things. <laughs> um, awesome. Any, anything else that wants to come through? Mm. I just want to thank you guys so much for the work that you both are doing in the world. It's just so amazing. And because I know both of you so deeply and intimately, there's just like this sense of congruence between um, who you guys are on a, on a Sunday and who you show up to be to your community on a Monday. And it's just, it's just beautiful to see, to see that integrity and that congruence. And it's just such an honor to be here hanging with you guys, serving, doing the things. That's beautiful. Thank you. Um, Mm. Received and, and ditto like, you know, Elon and I are, Definitely mm-hmm. believers that you are a product of the company that you keep. Um, high integrity people, the people that honor their word, people who are up to something uh, more than themselves are definitely the people we like to spend our time around. And mm-hmm. there's a reason that we keep reaching out to you over and over again to to find time to connect and be with each other because it's like mm-hmm. uh, I'm like a gas. You know, like we're I mean, we're a little bit older than you, obviously, but like what 30, 40 years from now it looks like like looking back at everything we've done, you know, like imagine these companies when they're 40, 50 years old, not five or 10 years old when ah, hundreds dude. of thousands of people have been impacted, maybe millions and books have been written and like experiences that you've had and all the people that you've met. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I can, I can like legitimately feel that future beckoning. Like uh, there's such a strong desire in humanity to be good. Mm-hmm. And it's been, and it's been, um, conditioned into such a narrow <laughs> path that now is getting wide and is also scaring the fuck out of everybody because it's like peering down the tube of the unknown and like constantly having to look back at yourself and be like, I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. Um, but I think we all hold this feeling inside of ourselves that like mm-hmm. we're almost like eternal optimists knowing that the future is going to get better. Yeah. Even if the structures that be try to like continuously make it something that it isn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, like in, inspiring people, sharing this work and even telling people been doing the work. We've all been doing the work for a long time, intense, deep work. And those parts, while like more calm these days are not gone. And I don't yeah. think that they're ever gone. Like, I don't believe that enlightenment is freedom from everything. I think it's fluidity with everything. Yes. Yeah. 
stuff. For, it's it's not like it's gone. It's not like oh, anger is not part of my life anymore. It's like no, it's just when anger arises, it fluidly comes in and comes out. Just with it. Let's see that with children. Like I, I, children are enlightened to me. It's like they come in. There's no playbook. The energy moves in. The energy moves out. It's innate. No one needs to teach that. We're not learning anything. Adults are unlearning. Mm, unlearning all yes, the that yes, have been put, that's, that's been put on us. And and these different and these different pathways are different pathways to release the conditioned learning that's not just up here, but has been like literally cemented. Not cemented because it's too strong of a word, but like mm-hmm. sewn into your system. Mm-hmm. And we're finding mm-hmm. ways to like you know, unknot and remove these threads from our system so that it can relax and come back into these very fluid experiences where it's like, if I need to fucking mm-hmm. scream, I scream. If I need to cry, yeah. I cry. Like we, uh, I shared with Sam, like we, we've had a very tragic death with somebody that we grew up with that we've known for 40 mm-hmm. years um, that very tragically died over the last, once you share the story about many months and he, he actually passed away yesterday evening. Mm-hmm. And and I couldn't like, it was too surreal to be with it. Like finding out that news yesterday, but this morning mm-hmm. just, I was in tatters, like fucking tatters crying, mm-hmm. um, really, really difficult experience. And, and part of me was like, wow, uh, I was so proud of myself because in mm-hmm. the past, like nothing would have come. Mm-hmm. I, I would have like thought, Oh, it's time to be sad, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't have experienced the, like the, the intense grieving that was happening in my body. And like that to me is speaks wonders about the type of work that that everybody Mm -hmm. here is doing and like what's really possible for our systems like feeling really feeling the depth of our experience is such a gift even Mm -hmm. when it's so fucking uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and allowing for that to come up so you know i know i know the work you do provides that as well Mm, thanks dude i appreciate that appreciate that thank you guys so much this has been so epic love you girl love you Love you guys out there too. Thank you for being part of the show today and listening, giving us your attention. We'll see you next time. Bye everybody. Thank you, dear one, for choosing to share a bit of your day with us. We value you greatly. And as a way to give back and help you to deepen these practices, we want to invite you to join our incredible community on Facebook. You can do so easily by going to joinoldsouls.com and ask for an invite. This is our private community where old souls and seekers are able to grow and share their journey with others. We hold exclusive weekly live streams, we answer your personal questions, and offer valuable insights that we won't be able to share here on the podcast. So again, just head to joinoldsouls.com and grab your invite today. And as always, if you enjoy this podcast, please head to iTunes and leave us a review. It's the only way other people can find this show. So if it's making a difference in your life, please share the love. Until we meet again, have an amazing week, dear one.